Hi all, welcome to my vlog 2 of skills and capacities in speed and agility performance. Um, before we get started, um, I just need to note that I did have difficulty collecting the footage I had planned for my vlog owing to my club acting uh, promptly against the coronavirus and stopping all access to coaching and even facilities weeks before the deadline. So although I wanted more footage to provide insight in some places of the vlog, especially when testing for a capacity issue or parts of an implemented program, I was heavily restricted and had to improvise towards the end. So this vlog will evaluate the skill and capacity issue of a 30 meter sprint, looking at both the acceleration and max velocity over two cases, um, the skill capacity issue of a 90 degree turn, studying the technical execution and its implications on the mechanical principles, and critiquing the execution to provide narrative on the implication to programming and training to improve performance. Focusing on the skill and capacity issues of a 30 meter sprint. Quick needs analysis of the athlete shows his sprint times over 30 meters, uh, which is relatively slow, and his upper and lower body strength testing, which does indicate he's also a very weak athlete. Okay, so now evaluating his acceleration. From the start, he falls into a very hunched over position with thoracic flexion in an attempt to drop to center of mass, possibly showing a compensatory strategy to achieve a more forward lean. On his second step, um, and you can notice there's no pull back of the foot, so the actual foot strike is in front of his centre of mass, producing a poor touchdown distance and failing to reduce the toe velocity. As we move um, into the stance phase, you will notice his heels collapsing, possibly suggesting a lack of ankle stiffness to manage the application of force. During this phase, you also notice how long the athlete is spending um, in contact with the floor, to an extent that if we look at a slow-mo video of his 10 to 20 meter um, A cell, you can see that there is a dominant backside mechanics. Um, now, this is particularly dominant on his right side, which is often seen in football players uh, with a dominant foot. So I've spoken about a few aspects of his acceleration that highlight potential um, capacity or skill issues, but now I'll just focus on the like, major three. So the first is forward lean. So understanding the acceleration is determined by the ability to apply significant horizontal force and the ability to limit the rate at which the angle of force application is decreased. And partner with knowing that the forward lean is the effect of horizontal force application. The athlete's position therefore suggests he's limited by the amount of horizontal force he can apply, which makes sense when considering his lower limb strength. Uh, touchdown distance, so this is also kind of crossed over based from that. Um, so the athlete displays a poor touchdown distance due to him not pouring the foot back under his centre of mass, which increases breaking forces. A lack of stiffness and or strength might have caused him to adopt a compensatory pattern of taking a wider sweep angle of the leg just to increase the contact length to accrue the horizontal forces needed. However, that then caused him to mistime the knee drive and display backside mechanics at 20 metres. So knowing these uh, like these things, um, if the athlete was able to generate forces to simply cater for the vertical forces and then have more um, force left to then apply horizontally, the athlete could then accelerate with more forward lean, pull the foot back under the centre of mass and apply a propulsive forces, minimising flight time during the acceleration. So the implications to his training, um, without access to a force plate, the athlete's inability to express forces is probably likely due to his lack of loathing, uh, limb strength, um, referring back to his previous needs analysis. Therefore, um, he completed a general strength training program to increase strength and rate of force development. Um, now, for the benefit of the vlog, hip thrust became a primary lift for me, as I had difficulty getting the athlete to buy into program, with the hip thrust uh, being a constant lift he was motivated to complete. Alongside sprinting at top speed regularly throughout the week, we slowly integrated resisted sled sprints to provide the athlete with a better stance um, of horizontal force application uh, with more time to the ground to develop their ability to produce propulsive forces um, and the load was progressed and programmed from their maximal resisted sled load. Moving on to a skill issue when sprinting, uh, this is the needs analysis of another player and in comparison to the athlete before, uh, this player uh, runs a quicker 30 metre time um, and is significantly stronger. Without stopping the video, um, you can probably notice that when he's sprinting, he isn't uh, sprinting tall, uh, with a tall posture, with flow and limb timings and rhythm to prepare for ground contact. In fact, it looks like he's running as hard and fast as he possibly can, trying to make contact with the floor and drag the floor behind him, still trying to accelerate when it gets to about 20 to 30 metres. Uh, the slow mode video shows the athlete kind of overstriding and pushing off behind, leading to backside mechanics and generally like a very long switch of the legs. Uh, 
Now if we pause the video you can notice the swing knee is behind the stance leg when directly under the body. Optimal position is for the basic swing leg to have broken the vertical plane of the stance leg as early as possible while not sacrificing the stride cycle. Uh, therefore we need to encourage the athlete to get into a front side mechanics, a stepping over action with a quick switch of the legs, applying force in the right way and also at the right time. Um, so to develop frontside mechanics we wanted to use wickets with the athletes but first we um, I looked to develop uh, rhythm so we just microdosed um, rhythmical movements at the start uh, prior to training um, throughout the week and so frequency was quite high and that included anything from isometric holes looking to hold like stiffness, um, hops, skips, dribbles, ankling um, and uh, skipping switches um, and then we gradually started then incorporating our wicket runs. Looking at the skill and capacity issues in change direction and agility performance. Within a game realistic demands, the athlete is defending a 1v1. Essentially, with removing all the decision making and scanning, you have a complex skill, including a lateral shuffle and a cross step. Now, within this random open 1v1 situation, the athlete keeps on getting beaten. Now, on a closer inspection, you can see um, that the athlete starts crossing his feet during the lateral shuffle. The lateral shuffle is a closed foundational skill, a basic tool of effective movement strategy. This skill is clearly breaking down and that could be due to the added stimuli and decision making. It could be a learned behaviour or it could be a mechanical deficiency that's limiting the technical application. During this freeze frame, it indicates that the player, when lateral shuffling, chooses to have a wide base of support and is very flat footed, which could indicate a lack of ankle stiffness, but overall doesn't allow him to be able to hold a position to react to the attacker. Assessing his lateral shuffles and cross step in isolation, you can see that he lacks ankle stiffness as he plants the outside foot as he spends a lot of the time on the floor and he uses that leg to drive the majority of the cross step but he doesn't even finish in an effective ACL position to apply the horizontal forces. This is further supported by looking at the height of his pogos and the ground contact time. So implications to training, it was a, it was quite an easy addition of just including plyometrics and ballistic jumps to this player's ongoing gym sessions. But he did it a uh, little while often, so he frequently had exposure um, to uh, developing stiffness and st the stretch shortening cycle, especially around the ankle complex. And that was a primary objective of this player's program. Uh, we then gradually started integrating foundational skills, so the lateral shuffle and the cross step, um, to develop these movement strategies and then exposed him to more decision making uh, within more of a chaotic environment with the required capacity to perform the turn. Owing to the coronavirus affecting access to facilities and players, unfortunately I had to film a skill issue with a recreational athlete with limited prior experience to coaching. The same complex skill as seen before was being practic practiced however, a lateral shuffle and a cross step. As the athlete is lateral shuffling, he tends to fall into a wide step with a large base of support, which means his subsequent step is also quite large with a long transition time before making contact with the floor again. This limits uh, himself to reacting off the opponent. As he performs the cross step, he drives his knee high to step over and around his opposite knee. Again, this high amplitude takes more time from change direction and accelerating. Instead, he should be looking to split the limbs and driving his knee forward, punching the floor, and on the second step, pushing through the opposite leg. Uh, the intervention, we simply practice the foundational skills in isolation, so the lateral shuffle and cross step, and then we gradually started trying to complex the skills together, forming a sequence. Practicing the lateral shuffles, um, we'll cue in remaining in contact with the floor and pushing from the outside foot, maintain that almost ready position characterised by that low centre of mass. We then manipulated the speed, direction and change direction at unpredictable times. We then rehearsed the cross step in isolation thinking about just splitting the limbs and driving the knee forward and punching the floor rather than uh, using that high knee and stepping over the opposite. So once the athlete um, appeared confident and consistently started showing improvements, we did try to start complexing the skills together. Um, it probably would have been a little bit too soon. I would have preferred to practice the foundational skills with different constraints first. However, you do see a difference in the height and knee to initiate the cross step compared to the first and last trials. Um, again, an improvement was probably slightly easier with this athlete as he had little coaching experience and those two technical flaws didn't seem too deep rooted. In summary, we identified and discussed a skill and capacity issue over a 30 metre sprint. Um, we also analysed a complex skill from a within game situation to identify a common fault to evaluate, providing insight throughout the vlog into how we then changed training or implemented an intervention to suit the needs of the athlete. Thank you for listening.